Okay, excuse the car, it's dirty right now, but this is probably the final update video I'm going to do on the Trinity swap. But uh, we've had some major setbacks uh, with the swap. Uh, that one video I took, the car was running great. I just needed to finish up the uh, wideband install. So I had the gauge put in and everything, the wiring, I done all that myself. But I can't weld exhaust. So I took it to an exhaust shop, had them weld up the bung, and they forgot to disconnect my battery and somehow it fried every O2 sensor in the car. I had to replace all of them. It fried my radio too, somehow. Uh, luckily, Crutchfield replaced that. The, uh, the shop reimbursed me for the O2 sensors. And finally got the wide band hooked up and it works. I had to wire up the, uh, the uh, SCT fire wire is what it's called. Uh, for the wide band so I can hook it up to the uh, X4 tuner that I have. So yeah, finally got that put in. It works. Uh, and I have everything wired up behind this panel. Uh, there's actually a, the wire that I have it to goes, you know, underneath the dash. And the power for the uh, this gauge is to my cluster fuse. I just use one of those piggyback fuse wires that you kind of put in place and you add an extra fuse to it. No well, matter of fact, excuse the mess in the car, but you can see it right there. It just uh, goes in place. I probably need to put the flash on. But yeah, anyway, it's uh, I can link those in the description in case somebody wants to use the same method I done with that. It just makes things a lot easier. Uh, and clean it's a cleaner install no splicing or anything like that but yeah i got that um let's see i need to grab a pick because i can't get this thing off as you can see i've scratched it up having this thing on and off so much actually i, I hate scratching anything up but uh yeah underneath this i have the uh fire wire that actually it comes out from here, I just have it cooled up, pull it out, hook it up to the tuner, you know, since it's in the OBD2 port, I just have everything within a grasp, so, yeah. So we finally got that. Um, actually, I spent a lot of money on tunes on this car. The tune I'm running right now is the VMP tune. I got it off American Muscle. It's really cheap. If you go on their website, uh, you can order their Stage 2 tune. I'm pretty sure is what it was. And uh, it's like $250, and it's actually a really good tune. Like, uh, I didn't like running it because I felt like it was a baseline tune, but after I started doing some highway pulls, the uh, AFRs are like perfect. Like, the tune is dialed in, the drivability is really good. Um, you know, when you turn the AC on and stuff, the car doesn't surge or anything like that that you can get with a bad tune. Uh, their tune was dialed in straight from the get go. Like, they sent it to me over email. Uh, had my doubts about it, uploaded it, and it does great. <sighs> then I also went with uh, BJ McCarty, and I'm actually on the sixth revision with him. And I'm not going to do a revision uh, until Monday. I'm going to wait till tomorrow, and because uh, I like doing stuff during business hours, in case something goes wrong, you know, like uh, you could have a voltage drop, lock up your PCM, stuff like that. So I like doing stuff where I can get in contact with SCT in case their tuner decides to have a malfunction or something. But uh, yeah, uh, I got the heat shield put back on with this uh, GOT123 intake. So that looks a lot better. But anyway, back to the tune. Uh, I'm on my sixth wide open throttle revision with BJ. Once I get that dialed in, I'm probably gonna use his tune uh, but like I said, VMP's tune was spot on. It was way cheaper. With BJ, it's $700 for his stage 2 tune. $250 with the VMP. BJ, he might pull more power out of it, but the VMP tune, it, it, it's actually a little bit rich, which I prefer. So it's a safe tune, and I really don't care about squeezing out uh, more power than I have to out of this thing. You know, unsafe power. But, uh, yeah. It's just, uh, it's crazy with all the uh, issues I had with that exhaust shop. That set me back a couple of days. Those O2 sensors are not fun to replace, especially these upper uh, O2 sensors, your upstream ones. 
and uh oh gosh i had to rig up some custom tools had to modify just to be able to get an o2 socket up there to remove them i do not recommend that and uh god bless anyone that has to do it i'd say with long tube headers it's a hell of a lot easier but uh yeah i'm still a factory manifolds and it is not fun but yeah, right now, like I said, I'm running the VMP tune. The car is doing great. I have my wide band hooked up. It's doing good. Uh, later down the road, I may uh, add a actual boost gauge since the 07 to 09 cars, can they only go up to 15. So, uh, and of course the stock pulley, the 2.6 pulley on the Trinity is good for 15 pounds of boost. That's what the 1314 GT500s were making with the 2.6 pulley. So, immediately, right out of the gate, when you floor it, the gauge pegs out. They say they're inaccurate to begin with. Mine was actually pretty accurate. Uh, when I had my old pulleys, they, it, it would read 13 PSI, which is what those pulleys were good for. But, yeah. Uh, the only issue with the boost gauge, I have no clue where I would want to put it. I may put, like, a small little... Uh, pod right here on the pillar but i just hate that it looks so bad i really don't want to use another vent because uh, i mean this vent right here this is the roush uh mount and the air like when you turn your ac and stuff on can still blow through it obviously you can't adjust like the vents or anything like that matter of fact here are the vents off that uh that vent right there uh the blades to the vent whatever um but yeah, I, I like how it's kind of, with the door shut and everything, it's out of your way. All your gauges are right here. You know, everything's easily uh, visible. So, I don't have to, you don't have to look up or those disgusting looking tripod gauges that go right there. You know, I don't have to look over there. It's just right there, glance away. But uh, I had a lot of trouble with this gauge right here. So if anyone's ever having trouble with the SCT uh, firewire uh, wiring up to this and tuning for data logging, uh, the equation that you get from BJ is for the regular AM gauges or wide bands and the pre-built uh, formulas, there's equations that you need to put in for your live link to work properly when you're doing data logging. Is your AFRs are gonna read as a voltage. They're not gonna read as the actual uh, the readings of this gauge. So say like we're stoic at 14.7, the live link data log would show like three volts. It's showing that it's getting power. So you have to put in a equation which can convert that voltage to the actual AFR readings. And every equation that I was given was wrong. I had to look up, I actually found it on a Facebook forum and it is a completely weird equation. It's the only one that worked. So I had that going for me for a little bit and then I started having issues again with the equations. It started reading voltage again. So it turns out when I updated Live Link, it somehow screwed the way this reads. So you have wires and you have a chart. This thing, the, the gauge itself, you have a, uh, I can't remember what color it is. I think this gauge has a white wire and it's analog eight. And analog 8 goes to an, an orange wire on the firewire harness that you get from SCT. Those go together. That is the only things you need to hook up. It's just analog 8 to the analog uh, wire, which is the orange firewire is what they call it, on the SCT harness. That's all you need to hook up. I originally had the analog grounds hooked up, which is uh, baby blue and brown. That's what I had hooked up, and it did read properly before I updated live link and when I updated it it started doing voltage again uh, I thought maybe like I had the uh, the equation put in wrong no I had everything right turns out I had to unhook the analog grounds the blue and the brown disconnected them so it was just the watt from this right here the analog wire I believe it's watt don't hold me to that but there's an analog 8 wire that you have to use from the gauge that goes to the SCT tuner and uh, that's the only two wires that need to be hooked up from the harness to this and then the right equation and it works So I had a lot of issues with that. Just a lot of bad luck with this damn wide band <sighs> Honestly the wiring the the programs and the tuning has been 
the major setbacks of this swap so far. Uh, as far as actually putting the supercharger and stuff on, you know, I had no issues. I put a mask on the old Cobra. <laughs> but, yeah, this is the final update, you know. Uh, I made another video of some pulls with the, uh, that was actually the VMP tune. And you've seen how good it was running. AFRs look great. They're about uh, high tens, low 11s. So we're talking about like 10.9, 11.2 as far as AFRs, which is what I like to see. It's not running lean. You know, the old saying, lean is mean. But yeah, so far, uh, so it's, it's a whole different animal now. The Trinity Swap is really the cheapest way to add power to 07, 09 GT500, especially since, you know, now if I need an injector replaced, I can go to online or any parts store and get a 13, 14 GT500 fuel injector. You get the parts pretty much. I just like the fact that it's still like, I wouldn't say factory, it's not factory in an 07, 09 car, but it's all like Ford parts. Like the Trinity is still, you know, a factory Ford supercharger on the 1314. So with this swap, it's like you have a, a factory way of boosting your car up with extra power. And I highly recommend it, especially since you can get those uh, swaps pretty cheap. And usually if you're keeping your eyes open, you can find swaps with the entire kit, the elbows, fuel injectors, boosted pumps, everything like I did for good prices. But yeah, uh, anyway, that's, Pretty much all this will be part three of the whole trinity swap escapades so yeah just wanted to let everyone know the car is running great right now even with the issues that i had uh i'm still more than happy with the way the car drives and handles and everything i mean honestly the way it drives the drivability is just the way it was before it's just when you floor it that's when you can tell the difference so yeah anyway thanks for watching and i hope that this can inspire confidence and anyone else want to do the trinity swap because it's super easy and i highly recommend it